we're here to talk about a battery electric transit van that you've unveiled today. Simple first question, why is an electric commercial vehicle important to Ford and the future of Ford electrifying its, its fleet? Well, first of all, uh, thank you for, uh, for having me. Um, as you know, we're, we as a company and as a brand are very strong in commercial vehicle arena with our F-150s, 250s, 350s, Super Duties, and of course, transit. You know, we've got 10 million transit vans on the, on the road right now. So as we electrify our portfolio, it is important for us to lean into our strengths. That's one big reason. The second big reason is e-commerce was already growing. And with the pandemic, it's growing even faster with a lot of home deliveries, package deliveries, et cetera. So it is important to offer our customers a clean, green electric vehicle that reduces their CO2 footprint or CO2 footprint of our fleet in general uh, and provide a vehicle that's very practical for them, which has a lower cost of ownership uh, and actually is actually pretty fun to drive. How did you arrive at the specifications of this Ford battery electric transit, right? A lot of people will point to the low range that it has versus other electric vehicles that are out there. So we, since we have a very strong relationship with our fleet customers uh, and, and we work with them hand in hand all the time, uh, we know what their needs are. Secondly, those fleet customers uh, allow us access to data on their drive cycles and how those vehicles are used and how they are running. So there's over 10 million miles of data that we looked at to understand how much, uh, how much range is really necessary for these vehicles. You'd be surprised to know most commercial vehicles uh, actually uh, spend less than, actually drive less than 74 miles in the US uh, per day. Uh, so we wanted to size the battery and the cost of the battery obviously goes with it to actually meet our customers' need. They do not want to pay for, for range or capability that they're not going to use. These are business people who are very, uh, very much in tune with their costs and the uh, costs of operation. So the, the range uh, will be uh, very much um, appropriate for this type of a customer. Talk to me about autonomy in commercial vehicles. I'm interested in the work that Argo AI, for example, may do with you around autonomy in a transit van. We know about the work that they're doing principally looking at passenger cars, but do you see a role for autonomy in a battery electric version of the transit? Well, I believe there's going to be a very important role uh, for autonomy in package delivery business. Uh, it, uh, it could take many different forms, um, but, we are, as you said, Argo is working uh, uh, very hard on solving all the difficult challenges that come with uh, having a vehicle drive itself. Uh, we're still committed uh, to having a vehicle out there that, uh, you know, at, at the, it'll go in stages, right? At the beginning, it will be something that's geofenced. It'll be something that may work only in good weather, may not in snow, but we're well on that path to deliver a vehicle uh, that can, uh, that, that can uh, be used in a commercial application like this one. There's an interesting dynamic here between Ford, Amazon, and Rivian. Ford already sells gas or combustion engine transits to Amazon, but Rivian also has an order from Amazon for 100,000 battery electric delivery vans. Ford now has its own battery electric delivery van. How is that going to play out in the future? Because, of course, Ford is also an investor in Rivian. Yeah, uh, as you mentioned, we're an investor in Rivian. We have a great relationship with that company. Um, uh, and they have a, a major partner in uh, Amazon as well. But our uh, commercial business is very, very broad. Uh, we uh, sell to multiple fleets, large fleets, small business fleets, medium-sized fleets. Uh, so the, the, our vehicle uh, is, uh, is targeted at those customers uh, that, that have multiple different needs. It's not just package delivery. It's Amazon and a few other companies are obviously very focused on, on package delivery. But we work with fleets that could be uh, construction, it could be mining, it could be uh, small businesses like plumbers and, and uh, florists. So all of those are looking to reduce their carbon footprint and have a vehicle that's, uh, that's flexible, that's usable, that has lower cost of maintenance, 
uh, and that's who we're working with. The Transit EV, of course, is just the next step in part of a process to electrify more of your models. We've got the Mustang Mach-E rolling off the production line, the electric version of the F-150 coming. Very exciting, but you're in the business of making money, of course. Talk to me about the profitability profile of those electric vehicles versus their combustion engine predecessors. And specifically, what are the margins like on electric vehicles versus those former gas models? A very complex question because there are so many different inputs go into it. Uh, for example, the, the, the transit, we will price at under $45,000. Uh, but there are so many other benefits uh, for a small business or a medium-sized fleet or even a larger fleet that come with it. It is not just the, uh, it's, it's not just the fact that the propulsion system has gone from internal combustion to, the, to battery electric. With this vehicle, we can offer all kinds of other business solutions to our customers through our four commercial services. Um, margins, if you look at it purely, uh, for us, if you look at it purely from a, uh, a propulsion system to propulsion system, they are worse because the battery and the motor and all the control system that goes, if you put it all together, versus an internal combustion engine with transmission, that cost of the battery electric is higher. But uh, we believe by offering a more holistic solution to our customers uh, with these vehicles, uh, we can uh, make a very substantial business case, uh, especially in commercial place like, uh, like transit. So you're saying that you hope to basically tap recurring revenues from these electric models through different kinds of of services, digital services, for example? Especially, especially in the commercial arena, uh, especially for a vehicle like Transit, where we can offer a fleet owner things like driver coaching, uh, things like preconditioning of the vehicle. Uh, you would be surprised, uh, fleets sometimes hire a full-time person just to manage keys on who's got which key and which driver. So the drivers can be identified by a unique code they put in the vehicle so everybody knows which, which vehicle is being driven by which driver. So there's a multitude of services and we're already doing this. For example, Trans uh, our Ford Commercial Services offers a package uh, that is approximately somewhere between 20 and $25 per month per vehicle that our, our customers find extremely valuable and, and we intend to grow that business. I want to talk about some of your other markets, in particular Europe and Asia. How do you see the transit van rolling out and doing in those markets? Because delivery vans are popular in Europe and particularly in the UK. So, yeah, in the UK, uh, you know, the slogan there is it's very well recognized as backbone of business. So uh, transit has played an incredibly important role. Uh, in, in the UK. Uh, we are launching this vehicle uh, simultaneously here and, uh, and in, uh, in Europe. It is uh, the best-selling uh, uh, commercial van uh, in Europe. And there as well, the team is working on a multitude of solutions that is more than just selling the vehicle to the customer. It is selling them an overall business solution. And what about Asia? Um, Asia, so let's talk about China. Uh, China is, uh, um, we, we sell quite a few transits there through our partner uh, called JMC. Um, and the electrification role that Transit EV is going to play uh, is primarily for now focused on US, Canada, Europe, uh, Mexico, and New Zealand. Uh, not saying no, but over time, uh, obviously we would electrified that portfolio as well, but uh, not, not in today's announcement. Of course, as you expand your electric footprint, you need to think about production capacity at your sites all over the world. I mean, in particular, this transit's gonna be built in Kansas City, Missouri, but you're also gonna build an EV at a plant in Mexico. What model are you gonna build in Mexico? We, as you know, we are building the, uh, the Mustang Mach-E in uh, Mexico already. Uh, it's, uh, it started production just a few days ago. Uh, we will be starting to ship those uh, very, very quickly. We are also going to build an incremental product in that same plant in Mexico uh, because it shares uh, several technologies and components with the Mustang Mach-E. 
what type of product that would be, we haven't announced yet because we just uh, finished the site selection on that product. As we get closer to launch, uh, we will share those details. But it's a consumer product. If it has some similarities with the Maki in terms of the components. That is, that is correct. It is, uh, it is not a commercial product. One question that, that many people have asked is why Mexico and not here in the US, for example, in Ohio, when you signed a contract with UAW last year, that was one of the agreements that you would eventually build an electric vehicle at an assembly plant in Ohio. Are there still plans to do that? And if so, when might we see that? This, the, the, the contract we had with the UAW was an excellent contract. And that process, that contract that goes all the way to 2023, we had a commitment of creating nearly 8,500 jobs uh, all over the United States. Uh, we are still very committed uh, to meeting those goals and, and uh, we're partnering with UAW to do so. In terms of why this particular product uh, is in Mexico, the primary reason goes back to is what I said earlier. Uh, we look at, when we create a product, um, we look at the most efficient footprint for, uh, for that to be manufactured. And because of the commonality uh, with Mustang Mach-E, the best place for it to be produced was in Mexico, uh, and that's, that's where we're doing it. But we're fully committed to the, to the contract and the, the job creation in the United States. We are the, uh, the manufacturer who has more uh, UAW workers in the U.S. than anybody else. We export more from U.S. than anybody else. We manufacture all of our trucks where we are very strong in the U.S., so very committed to U.S. manufacturing and uh, to meeting the, our contract goals. But this particular vehicle was better suited for Mexico. It's been a very busy few weeks around the U.S. election. We have President-elect Biden. He has a clear policy platform when it comes to electric vehicles, clean energy. How, what kind of impact do you see President-elect Biden having on accelerating the adoption of electric vehicles? And, and does it make you easier, does it make it easier for you to build a, an electric vehicle outside of the US if indeed Joe Biden does become president of the United States? So, um, yeah, we always obviously, like any good business, work with the whichever administration uh, is in place. We're looking forward to working with, uh, with President-elect Biden and his transition team. Obviously, very early to say, what the exact policies would be, but I expect uh, there will be more emphasis on, on electrification of, of the portfolio. We, are, we were ahead of most manufacturers in signing a very comprehensive CO2 agreement with California Air Resources Board last year. Uh, and uh, we are going to continue to work both with California and the federal government uh, to do whatever is necessary to, to meet the, uh, the goals of both electrification and CO2 reduction. We're also, we've always been committed to the Paris, our contribution to the Paris Accord, and we continue to do so, and we will continue it, uh, working with the, with the next administration on it. Before I let you go, we've got to talk about an electric F-150 pickup. How big a market do you see for a pure battery electric pickup truck? I'm not talking about hybrids, but pure play battery electric pickups? Uh, the, it's, it's a difficult number to place, but let's say it is the largest segment in the United States and it is the largest segment we play in and we have a huge share in it. Uh, so we're really proud of the fact that uh, uh, I think we announced only a few weeks ago uh, that the F1, we will build an all electric F-150 uh, at our historic Rouge plant. Uh, when we announced it, uh, we said we were going to create 300 new jobs um, <clears throat> uh, in, that, in that process, in, in the building of that vehicle. The demand uh, was so strong after we revealed it that we, have, we immediately started working on higher capacity, and which has resulted in an incremental 200 jobs. So we're taking the plant we were building, we're increasing its capacity, uh, can I give you a X number thousand units today? Uh, it's probably not appropriate, but we are very optimistic on, on, on electrifying the full-size pickup market, starting with our F-150 battery electric vehicle. I just want to hone in on that demand question, because I think I'm right in saying before you'd even completed construction of the, the production line in Dearborn for the F-150, electric F-150, you basically plan now to double capacity. 
But what is the demand picture from kind of fleet uh, and commercial buyers of these pickup trucks? Is that where it's coming from? Is it, you know, individual pickup owners? Where do you see demand coming from in terms of the type of buyer, but also geographically in this country? Yeah, so uh, different OEMs are taking different approaches. Uh, some are going purely after lifestyle type of pickup truck. Uh, our, our strategy is very different here. It is going to be an F-150. It is going to be a built for tough F-150. It is going to be a very work capable F-150. Having said that, it is going to be also an incredibly fun to drive vehicle. Uh, with tons of torque and, 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 and uh, acceleration, of course. So what we saw in that increase from when we announced to, to within the next few weeks, uh, it was from all sectors. It was from fleets uh, who wanted them. It was from personal use F-150 players. If it, was, it was also from uh, some larger fleet type applications where those uh, consumers are trying to reduce their own footprint. So I would say very, very broad based demand from uh, all, aspect, all, all sectors of that segment, which is great to see.